Canon versus Sony. This has been a debate for years amongst content creators, filmmakers, photographers, and I would say Sony has kind of taken the reins as of late with their latest camera releases, but the Canon R5C, I believe, is Canon's attempt to get back on the throne, and we're gonna be breaking down this incredible 8K camera for filmmakers as well as photographers as it can do both at a really high level. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tsukori with Think Media, and we're here at NAB 2022 in Las Vegas. Excited to be back on the floor, hitting conventions up, and checking out the best tools for creators. We're here at the Canon booth, and this camera has taken a lot of attention from content creators and filmmakers because of its abilities. Now, the Canon R5C uh, answers a lot of the problems that recent Canon cameras have come out with, whether that be you know overheating internally or large file sizes and things like that. But let me just run through some of the features this camera has, and then I'll just share some of my thoughts and tell you kind of who it's for and what I like about this camera. The EOS R5C offers the RF mount, which is Canon's newest lens lineup, and people have been loving it. it has a 45 megapixel count for photography, which is awesome. It is a full frame 8K sensor, which is really great. And it shoots 8K up to 60 frames per second, 4K up to 120 frames per second, which is incredible. An internal cooling fan, which is gonna help it from overheating, which is awesome. It shoots Canon Log 3, so if you wanna get into some color grading, that's pretty great. Super extra, but it also supports their dual fisheye lens, which is one of the only lenses that offers VR support at a you know consumer price point, which is pretty sweet. It does proxy and sub recording, so if you want easier files to edit with, you can do that all simultaneously while you're filming in those high frame rates and big file sizes, which is nice and convenient for workflow. And then it also supports HDMI out at 8K, depending if your recorder supports that. Now the price of this camera is $4,500 here in the US for the body. Now I would say that is not a bad price point considering Sony's competitive camera being the Sony A1, with that camera being $6,500 uh, for the body here in the US. So considering what you're getting with this camera is great on a price point standpoint, but I really know this is Canon's uh, heart to reach people who are doing both video and photo. What I love about this camera, first and foremost, is the experience as a user. When you're in video mode, it's gonna really feel like you have a cinema camera with the menu features, the way it looks, and all those things. When you're in photo mode, it literally gives you the look of what any traditional Canon camera, DSLR or mirrorless would give you. And so if you're familiar with Canon cameras, it's really cool that they've really taken their menu system to the next level, offering easy use based off of what you're using the camera for. Here at Think Media, we're not shy about saying that we're huge on using Sony cameras. We've been loving them. We've been using them for years. Uh, currently, our main cameras are the Sony a7S III and the FX3 for video. And I say that specifically because those cameras are great for video. And then it kind of drops down when it comes to their use for photography. The a7 IV, which is about a $2,500 camera, is limited in its video features as far as 4K 60 goes because there's a crop in uh, and things like that. And so uh, when you're talking about a camera that has no limits, I would say it is the Sony A1. But at $2,000 more than this camera, this is a great camera to look at. I love the fact that it has an articulating screen and if you like holding your camera in your hand, uh, it's nice because it has a little bit of weight and a little bit of meat, uh, but nonetheless, a great camera. And I would say just a camera for creators who are getting into you know, filmmaking, photography, and you know, a lot of filmmakers and photographers are now creating content, so having that articulating screen is really nice. So if you are shooting yourself doing uh, videos, talking head videos, things in your uh, office or studio, it's going to be a great camera for that as well. So I'd love to know from you, Think Media, what do you think about the Canon R5C, its features and the price? I think it's an incredible hybrid camera, especially if you're someone who wants to do both photography and video at such a high level. That's honestly why I've been loving the A7 series, so the A7 III and now the A7 IV being one of my main cameras. It's because they do both really well, uh, but the price point is really great. However, I know Canon's trying to direct their market for this camera, for people who are actually going to be making money using this camera, right? So probably a good investment and I see a lot of people switching over from Sony back to Canon because of this camera but that is the Canon R5C and if you want to check out another video from us here at Think Media you can click or tap the screen I can't wait to see you in a future video peace